Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil. And I am Opposite Phil. Opposite Phil. That's right. Blue lab coat, yellow shirt, evil mustache. I see. Anyway, we're looking at opposing forces today. That's uh, forces that make things go down and forces that make things go up. Right, things with more density and things with less density. Uh, gravity and the opposite, which is anti-gravity. Anti-gravity isn't really a thing. You're... Well, I have to do the opposite. Right. Um, buoyancy. And buoyancy's opposite, which is girlancy. No, girlancy is not the opposite of buoyancy. You know, you're not helping. Right, not helping. Opposite. Ha-ha. <laughs> Hello. Uh, goodbye. Today, we're going to be making a gravity-powered boat. Ta-da! It's pretty easy to make. You just put water in the top here. Gravity of the water pushes it out the straw, and the boat goes forward. And it's super easy to make. You only need four things. A piece of styrofoam, a plastic cup, craft stick, and a straw. And the tools you'll need, a pen, a craft knife, and the help of an adult, and science glue. Which is the same as regular glue, except I only use this glue for science. You take your styrofoam and you cut it into a boat shape. That requires the knife and the help of the adult. Then take your cup and draw the circle that your cup will sit in. And then you wanna put two slashes with your craft knife in there. Again, get the help of an adult if you need it. Uh, and then start carving out the styrofoam with your finger and make a nice little indent just like this for your cup to fit in. See, and then it fits in nice, nice and snug. So then what you wanna do is you want to make a hole in the cup. You can use a pencil. The hole has to be just big enough for the straw to fit in. First, you want to take the straw and dig up in this direction so that it will be a nice angle for the water to come out. And then you want to get the straw back up into the cup like that and then glue it so that it is not going to leak any water. And then in the final step, and this is your choice, you don't have to do this, but you can use your craft stick and you can make a rudder. Or if you want, you can make a whole keel, which goes just like that. And it is right in the middle of the boat, and this helps the boat go straight, because sometimes the straw goes off to the side one way or the other. Okay, water-powered boat. Actually, it's a water and gravity-powered boat. You see, what you do is you fill up the cup with water, and the gravity of the water in the cup pushes it out the straw, and the boat goes forward. And this is what it looks like in the water. You fill up the cup and the gravity pushes the water out that way. The buoyancy of the boat keeps it afloat and good old Newton's third law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. The water going out the straw this way pushes the boat that way. And it works pretty well. Whoa, if it's going straight. That's why we have the keel. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. This is the ultimate mousetrap boat. We got 10 mousetraps here. We got our long arm. We have it attached at the right point of the lever, we think. And then we've got two, two paddle wheels at the back and pontoons. Yes. Yeah, so what I do you think, think this Kayla? thing is set. It's gonna be awesome? Yep. Okay, ready? Ready? Let's test it. Well, oh, it's working. Hey, it's working. It's picking up speed. Yes. Wow. Whoa, mousetrap boat. I mean, it's good. It's good. It's not Science Max good. Yeah. Uh, we were hoping it would go faster. Faster no. or, no, pretty much just faster, yeah, okay. <laughs> Obviously, we need to store more energy that will make the paddle wheels uh, go faster, right? Yeah, so we just have to think about it, right? Like, what's stronger than a mousetrap? Well, 10 mousetraps, that's why we have 10 <laughs> mousetraps, Michaela. Okay, what's what's stronger than 10 mousetraps? 11 mousetraps, <laughs> like, if we just keep going, okay, and it's just gonna get super wide, we we'll have a thousand mousetrap wide. What's, what's, enough what? with the mousetraps, have you ever seen like a rat trap? No? They're huge. Well, hold on. I can just get one from the portal. One rat trap coming up. Oh, I can't, okay, can't from. All right, well, that's fine. <laughs> and whoa. Wow. Yeah, look at that, that is a lot bigger. Huge okay, so difference. snap yours. Is, All right, is it? Ready? Mouse trap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying. So that's a lot more power. Yeah, a lot of force. Uh, so tell you what, we have a little mouse trap boat. Why don't we build a little single rat trap powered boat and we'll race them and we'll just see the difference in, in power from one rat trap to one mousetrap. I like that. We'll do a prototype before we make a big one. Yeah, okay, come on, let's go. So we built a rat trap boat to race the mousetrap boat. 
And then Michaela and I got a little competitive. Check out the rat trap boat. No, oh, check out the mouse trap boat. Mouse trap boat is better because... <laughs> yeah, rat trap boat is better. It's got bigger springs, more potential energy stored in here. And, and mouse trap boat has less potential energy and less springs, but he's got more heart and he really wants to win. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you what, Phil. Loser jumps in the pool. What? Oh, um, uh, okay. Sure, let's do it. Okay, ready? Go! So, as you may have guessed, the rat trap boat has a lot more potential energy that can be stored in the spring. Okay, so, rat trap boat is clearly better than the mouse trap boat. We make the boat the same way, yeah. but we use rat traps instead of mouse traps. What do you say? <laughs> Love it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Wait a second, Phil. What? Ferris Fairy, gotta jump in the pool. Okay, fine. Here you go. Hold this. <laughs> I got a super special on anything that can fly. Go on, pick something out. Oh, uh, I hit the paper airplane. Ah, oh, good choice. Good choice. But guess what? Paper airplanes don't fly. Full price. Yeah, I know. But before you start arguing with me, you need to know the difference between flying and gliding. A paper airplane does not fly. It glides. You need constant thrust in order to fly. If you do not have constant thrust, then you glide. Take this bird. This bird can fly because it flaps its wings. It has constant thrust. On sale. But this airplane cannot fly. You give it some initial thrust when you throw it, but after that, it can only glide. Full price. But look at this. It's an airplane powered by a propeller on an elastic. Now we're talking constant thrust. It can fly on sale. But it can get confusing. I mean, look at this flying fish. Nope. Flying fish cannot fly. They can only glide. Full price. Look at this. It's a cute little flying squirrel. He climbs a tree, jumps off from a high branch, opens his legs, and there's a little flap of skin there that allows him to sail to another tree. Ha <laughs> ha, flying squirrel. No, not flying, no constant thrust. Gliding squirrel. Full price. Okay, tell you what, you came all the way down here, I'll make you a deal. Check this out, flying fish, ah? Now it has a propeller, it has constant thrust. It flies for real. And ditto, squirrel with a jet engine, ha <laughs> ha. And now you know the difference. Something that flies has to have constant thrust. Otherwise, you're just gliding. Squirrel away! I forgot to gas him up. Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. <laughs> Delicious. Nothing is more important to have fresh than your seafood. It's what makes the difference between a fresh fish... <laughs> ah, ...and one that isn't so fresh. <laughs> <laughs> if you live by the ocean, you probably know that the water gets high tide and low tide. Look closely, it's the same location. Amazing! Oh. But did you know that this is caused by the gravity of the moon and the sun? Say this cookie is the Earth. And this little happy fellow is me. Hello! <laughs> and this string represents the water around the Earth. If we didn't have gravity to worry about, the water would all be equally deep around the Earth. But here comes the moon, this mushroom. Now, the moon has gravity, and that pulls the oceans towards it a little bit, like this. And that creates high tide there, and low tide here, and a little bump of high tide on the other side of the Earth. And as the Earth rotates and I'm on it, I experience low tide and high tide and low tide and high tide. Very interesting. But there's another factor, the sun, or this lemon. Now, the sun also affects the tides, but not as much as the moon. Now, the sun does not affect the tides as much as the moon because it's much further away, but it still has an effect. If the sun was here, then the tides would be pulled away 
a little bit like that, and the tides would be less severe. But if the moon and the sun line up, like over here, you'd get a very, very high tide and very, very low tide. So there you are. That's how the tides are affected by the gravity of the moon and the sun. Mmm, delicious. I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on Cooking with Science. Oh.